mighty bang. <laughs> what is that? Hello, hello, dedicated fan. It's nice to see you. Hey, everyone, I qualified. Yeah! <laughs> The slowest quality run I think I've ever done and still managed to sneak in. So interestingly enough, today is quality day here in Mont St. Anne and it's inside the tape day. And uh, this is actually the biggest gap between first and 60th. So the qualifying time gap we've seen, usually it's within about 10 seconds here at this race. I think it's about 27 seconds. That's massive and it just shows how brutal this track is. So let's take you down this track. So the track starts as not many tracks do, you're in the gondola station. You've got the gondola making a lot of noise, whizzing around and you're in there trying to get in your zone. It's actually kind of nice. It's like a white noise that just helps you to focus. And you sat there in the start gate, leaning against the wobbly thing. And then you drop in down the big steep start ramp, only get a couple of pedal strokes and you just pump down that thing and you're up to speed immediately. It's super sick. Flat grassy turns, long sandy left that you don't want to go too wide in because it's like a sand pit in there. Hold it tight, sharp right and then you're into the rocks. Super fast down this straight. You've got to be very precise, don't catch any edges and try not to touch the brakes. Through the next section, little gap into a left hander. Some people go left, hit the rock and do the double. Some people go right, sneak by the tree. Staying low, staying off the brakes, pumping the ground, keeping the speed. Little rock drop into a heavy compression that's getting deeper, it's getting harsher and it spits you out the other side into some rock steps. Some people are gapping, some people are skipping. Doesn't really matter. Into the next bit, the track used to go fully left and then round a right hander, which didn't have a lot of support. Most people are hitting that left and then just going straight over the inside of the bank next to the tree, catching the end of the berm. But there's a massive hole developing in that first left. So some people are trying to sneak inside of it. It's very hard to get good. Out of that corner, into the next bit, there's a rock drop that is way too sharp for the speed you're going. So most people are sneaking next to the pole, but there's a hole forming on the landing. So you just gotta be cautious about that. Round the left, over the next right hand crest, sometimes clip the pole on the inside because you wanna get as close as you can to it. Down into the next section, gap some rock slab rocks and into a right hander that has three lines. There's a fully outside line, big old rut on it, not very nice. There's a middle line, big old rut on it, not very nice. And there's an inside line, it's a little bit better. No, it doesn't have a big rut in it yet and it is drying out in the sun. All the lines work. I like the inside one. Off of that drop down the next straight, big left hand berm that's starting to break up. I've seen tire marks of people trying to inside it right now. Railing around the outside is still working. Tiny little step up over a drainage ditch down and into one of the coolest features. So you've got slight rock drop, tricky right hand berm and then a left hand shark fin that you can just scrub off, give a little bit of style or slip, dab, and then nearly die. Both of them are viable options. <laughs> you wanna carry speed out of this though, cause the next section, you do not touch your brake for flipping ages. And I think the speed trap might be on it, but don't quote me on that. Down the next straight, over a little drop, speed tuck as much as you can while still managing to work the bike through the terrain. Just no brakes needed here. You're just straight down that piece. Then we miss out the awkward, gnarly bus stop that we used to do, and we just do a little double. Land, small drop, another small drop, right hander, and then into the first section of dark trees. It's a little bit greasier in here because the sun doesn't penetrate, so you've got a right hander, double drop. Some people are gapping it, some people are going all the way around. Rail that corner that's starting to develop ruts in it. Watch out for those slippy rocks. Got to keep your eyes up, make sure you get in the right line. Then after that, it splits. There's an outside line that you can hook round and then go straight through the next slippy rocks or try and get outside of the slippy rocks. Or what most people are doing is going on the right hand side of the track on the inside and then all the way around the rocks through the next step and into the first fresh section. This was all loamy and beautiful and wonderful at the start of practice, but now shiny rocks are coming out, ruts are developing, lines are getting blown out, but you just monster truck into your gap in, hit the compression. And at the moment, there's a big rut that just holds you like an absolute champ at the bottom. You're gonna hook into that over a crest back into the original track really tight right hander that you gotta make sure you get off the brakes and commit to because it'll hold you but it's very tight and very hard to hit at speed after that a little bit flat a few pedal strokes in and then there's a gap of sorts it can be gapped i have gapped it 
but it's awkward, it's weird. And on a full run, it feels nicer just to squash it and kind of roll through it. I think gapping is faster though. But you land that right hander and into the, one of the nastiest rutted out left handers on the track over the next drop into a quite tricky bit with a few different options. So there's a big rock at the start and then you've got two options that kind of cross over. You can go wide, carve a turn, drop it down into that next muddy straight or you can hug the right hand side and drop and then try and gap on the way out but there's a big hole developing on the right hand side and when you drop into it it's a big impact to take so a lot of riders started on that right hand line and have moved on to the left hand line so very tricky sections to get good down into the next right hander which has got a big old rut into it which was so big and qualifying compared to the start of the week and into probably the most awkward scary rock garden i would say big old rocks slimy dirt over the top and if you get offline and slip you've then got a huge drop to flatten the exit and if you go off of that in a bit of a state or offline it can end badly anyway out of that heavy landing left hand turn and a little breath stretch out the fingers and down the next section is what would have been the super fast bit we go right hander into the trees round left drop heavy compression few roots and things in here slap the left along traversing across the hill and then we get into a very interesting section with a few different lines so coming into the section the old original line was just straight down the middle over the rocks and roots into the channel right left around the outside and off down into the next section or you could try and go inside over a rock right next to the pole to try and straighten things out but it doesn't quite straighten things out you still end up doing a little scandy skid flick into the left hander but what a lot of riders discovered was there's actually a straighter line that you can do which wasn't nice to begin with but as riders started trying it it started to get better and better as tire marks started to wear it in so instead of going right you could just go straight and then do a sharp turn at the end which it wasn't good to begin with, but as riders rode it, it started to develop a rut and started to get better, which just made it super direct, super straight, but it was debatable about whether the corner at the end gave you the exit speed that you would need. Out of that section, the track had three more options. So super high line, no one's doing that. Get out of town. There is a low line, no, middle line. On the middle line, that's where most people are going, and it's really gotten worn out. It used to just be like this fresh bit of topsoil, but now it's just like worn away. Like, it's almost gone. It's almost down to the level of the original track. Then a tight corner through some trees, and then a split over the route, down the left, on the right, through the channels, and into what doesn't look like it's hard, but it's really hard to do fast. Big compressions, lots of rocks, a couple routes, and then a very tricky left-hander that you want to carry speed out up because the exit is flat. So it's a very hard one to get clean. Out of that corner, on the gas, little drop, round a slight corner into the channel, few drops. Whew, feels like you're on a bobsled run, just flinging through those corners, down into a really tight corner that's very hard to get clean. Left right pop out the trees and then you're back into the open section back into the trees slight right hander nice fast left hand burn a hip jump that you can get a little bit of style on if you're so inclined and into the fastest berm on the track you're just singing around this thing and you can feel the g-forces as you're going around it into a step up hook it round down into a hefty compression stevie smith drop very tempting to go into this fast but if you go too fast you'll end up taking off and having a very bad time. Brake check, keep the wheels on the ground, drop off onto the wood. Most people are railing around the berm. Some people like myself are being a bit foolish and trying to go inside. Feels cool, but I don't know if it's faster. Into the next rock slab, and most people are on the same line here. Just stay in the middle, hit the compression on the exit, scoop round, maybe get a little, little bit of turn bar on the way out just for the photographers, and then flat out down the next section. Slam a right off the crest down the next section you want to rest your fingers and stretch them out but it's so rough and so fast you just you're just holding on and trying to speed tuck over a blind crest bang hit the right nice crest jump over the bridge long right hander compression sling a left and into the gnarliest rock garden there is and we've got two different lines the original middle line through the compressions and into the tight trees or a super high line that some people are gapping into that does open up the angle a little bit through the gnarliest chunky rocks where you're just 
praying that you don't hit the wrong one and get a puncture through the compressions. Some people gapping over the compressions, most people just rolling through. That some people are swinging round and then going inside down the next straight, but it's very hard to get good and there's some really nasty edges on the rocks on the exit when you come in from that line. Most people are going straight and there's like a rocky berm, if you want to call it that. It's not very nice. <laughs> it's, 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 it's horrible. It's like all the rocks are at awkward angles I and mean, people do it good. It looks like a berm, you can just hook around it, but you have to be precise. Off camera rocks in the exit and then the slippiest rocks in the wet where you have to turn and they're all off camera and you don't want to slip because it's like a 10 foot drop down to the dirt. In the dry though, sick, super fast, pump through the compression, coming out the woods, gap out, pop out, little bit of sunshine, stretch the fingers out, last wood section, jump in off the rock, big compressions you're really hanging by this point like your forearms feel like they've got nothing left but you've got to hang on you've got to get this bit good over a drop that you don't want to go too fast off it's really easy to go too fast but if you land too deep you lose your speed try and catch a little bit of down slope and then the rock drop that some people are pulling for this is like the hero gap from a few years ago if you get that you're doing well most people are just pumping through it with a slight variation in the lines that don't make too much of a difference flat out, down the next section, don't touch the brakes, try not to slip on anything as your noodle arms are trying to hold on, pop out into the last open bit of track, long right, stretch the fingers out, get some pedals in, long left, drop, and then you've got three lines, go fully outside, long way round, but it's nice and consistent, a little bit of an inside rut in the middle, and or a super inside on the grass right next to the pole, over that scrub jump, down into the next rock garden, over the next rocky crest. Don't touch the brakes, stay off them, carry speed around the drop, speed tucking as much as you can. Pull for the double, on the gas, just cr you crunch through the gears in the air and like wind up the pedals as you land to get a last sprint to the finish and speed tuck through. And that is one of the gnarliest tracks on the World Cup circuit. I mean, we see it, we see it for every round, but this one is something else. And I've not forgotten. We'll do the ghost in bit. We'll do that ghost in bit in the wood. Look at that. And here we go. First man through this section. We have Remy Terry on. Highline gapping into that low. And a little stall on the turn, but still carrying decent speed into that next bit. We've got Greg Williamson, the fellow Scotsman. He's on that right line on the way. And he goes straight, straight line. Super direct. And oh dear, where is he off to? Let's see if that works out for him. So here we go. Morning as they usually do. There's Remy, he's up on that highland. He's getting set up as Greg just goes straight. Greg overtakes him. No, it's, no, Remy's in front. Remy's in front now, but Greg's on that shorter line. Can he carry more speed out? Remy taps the brakes in the turn, loses a bit of speed, and Greg's in front. Look at him, he's in front, and where's he going? He's going the wrong way. Gregory, no. Look at Remy go, and yeah, look at that. 0.37 Greg, get on the normal line. Greg, Greg. <laughs> and now we've got Roger Vieira, our sleeper cool favourite, pink bike favourite I would say, absolute hero of a human, he's on that direct line and slotting down into that section but here we have man of the moment, Andreas Kolb, is it the tyres or is it just he's really good on a bike, look at him on that normal line, high and into that next section. So let's see. And here we go, they both come in and they're on a very similar line. They're up inside each other, y'all. And then, oh, and he's up on that high. Roger's in the middle. He's on that middle line as he aims for that straight line. Super direct. Little skid from him as Andy swings around the outside and it's looking like Roger's in front, but Andy jumps over him, carrying the speed out of that low line and into that next bit. Wow, 0.49 to the Austrian. Oh, and here it is, Philip. He wasn't in snowshoe, but he's back here and he's on the comparison on that direct line. Absolutely hanging out through there like only Phil can, but wait. But here comes Bernard Kerr, fastest man in time training. He's on that high into the gully, round the outside, does stall on the turn. It's so hard to carry the speed out of that, so let's see. And here they come with T-Willow watching in the background. It's Phil on that lower line. Bernard on the high as Wynn checks it out. Wynn doesn't know which one's better. I do though, because here they come as Bernard swings down into that low rut and Philip is going straight. Philip is going to ease out in front because he's on the more direct line, but will Bernard carry the speed? I'm not sure. He gets a little quarter crank in there. He's catching him. It's getting close. Bad the line. 
Philip Atwell, point one six up. Good lad. And actually, Philip wasn't the fastest through this section. From what we can calculate using all the computers and calculators, Amory Pierron was the quickest, but he was so much quicker. The ghost in software did a poop. It didn't work. So look at him go. There it is, fastest man, main line. We would have compared me, but I was so much slower, I, it didn't work. <laughs> Oh, oh. That chopped out a wee bit. Ben. Oh, I'm not having a good morning, Glenn. Ben. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be there. That's it. Done. I'm going to go see if I can get my arms to work again. Oh. Oh.